though the story going around is that recently Big Mac's been acting kind of funny. This was the CMC's observation as they were going over a box of old costumes left over from a talent show that Sweetie Belle found in Rarity's shop. CMC's found many uses for these costumes as they thought they could be useful for helping them discover the talents of theatrically inclined ponies. But in this particular situation, they decided to use the costumes themselves to spy on Big Mac and find out what was making him act so unusual. Over quite some time, Big Mac's been making quite a lot of deliveries to Starlight Glimmer's old town, and in particular to the Baker Sugar Bell, who's accumulated quite a large number of apples from all of Big Mac's deliveries. The CMC went on their little mission, stowing away on the wagon, and spying on Big Mac until they put two and two together and discovered that Big Mac had a crush on Sugar Bell and Sugar Bell had a crush on Big Mac. Apple Bloom was excited to discover this news and at first she yelled and screamed about it but after a while calmed it down and learned to handle the situation delicately. Big Mac wasn't able to address Sugar Bell directly about how he felt, so it fell on the girls to coach him into how to approach Sugar Bell and express his feelings. His initial attempt, however, was foiled by another pony by the name of Featherbanks, a something of a slick talking pretty boy who's also a member of a boy band of some kind and has a large number of talents in things such as poetry, singing, and juggling, which uh, impresses all of the mares around him. With the incredible sense of time in Featherbanes was able to interrupt Big Matt's attempts to flirt with Sugar Bell as well as impress a f few mares who have been following him around constantly, fangirling over all of his little talents. With Big Mac failing, he turned to the CMC to get some advice, and Sweetie Belle gave him one bit of advice after another after another, using scenarios that were depicted in her book of fairy tales, figuring that if a situation works in fiction, that it must work in real life, and suggesting that Big Mac try various somewhat ridiculous and unrealistic things to try and impress the mayor that he likes. But every single time Featherbands, or Feather Brain, as I prefer to call him, was able to intercept Big Matt's attempts at impressing Sugar Bell and was able to take the glory away from him. This whole nonsense came down to Big Matt trying to impress Sugar Bell with a country song that he had written. And then Featherbands decided to interrupt Big Matt's song with a boy band style pop song. The two of them did a battle of the songs back and forth until Finns got completely out of hoof and they accidentally destroyed some of Sugar Bell's furniture. Her emotions seemed to have gone back and forth between loving the attention and hating the attention but once her furniture was smashed, she kicked all of the ponies out of her house and was really upset at every pony. While Featherbands backed off after this, Big Mac took one last try, ignoring the fairy tale book and deciding to do 
the things that Sugar Bell actually wanted, taking a more realistic approach in considering the feelings of the pony that he wanted to impress, rather than trying to imitate what fiction was telling him to do. Do and it worked building the shelves that he had destroyed and building them up better than before impressed Sugar Bell because it showed that Big Mac actually paid attention to what she wanted. Big Mac was able to impress the mayor that he was in love with, and Featherbend was left with no pony. And thus concludes our story. The moral of which is that if you want to impress some pony, it is better to impress them with what they really truly desire and show that you actually know something about them, as opposed to allowing your decision-making process to be influenced by works of fiction. Works of fiction may romanticize certain actions, but when those actions are applied in reality, they're often not practical. And in some cases, of somewhat questionable morality as well. What sounds good and romantic in our stories is often not actually what the pony we want the attention of actually desires. We should be considering what ponies actually really want in real life and try to get to know each one on a personal level rather than giving them what we are told they are supposed to want. Sweetie Belle, Stoodaloo, and Apple Bloom all had different ideas as to what it was that was causing Big Mac to act unusual and why he'd been making the trips to the village and what it was that Sugar Bell wanted from him. Apple Bloom was at least practical enough to figure out maybe the obvious is what is really happening and that Big Mac just is delivering lots of apples. End of story. But Sweetie Belle seems to be the one who was observant enough to realize that Sweetie Belle and Big Mac had an attraction together. Considering that Sweetie Belle was also the one who helped Zippo Will solve her problem with her puppy, it seems that we're two for two on Sweetie Belle being the more observant member of the CMC and the more capable one when it comes to solving interesting problems. And in the past a few times, Sweetie Belle's given good advice to her friends on different situations, so that seems to be sort of where her strong suit is. All of the different things that the CMC tried to do to help Big Mac with his problems they always started out in a way that was kind of cringy because I knew just from seeing those fins unfold that they weren't going to work out the way every pony thought they would work out. But because of Featherbrain's interference in each of these events, none of the elaborate ridiculous plans that the CMC were attempting ever got a chance to succeed or fail because each plan was interrupted before it could be completed. So we never got to see Big Mac fail because the CMC's plans were ridiculous to begin with. Instead, we got to see Big Mac fail because of a romantic rival who was constantly interfering with those plans and sort of intersecting them, as it were. So, expectations sort of cringed their way up to a certain point, and then got flipped around and turned into another direction, going in ways that were unexpected, but also quickly predictable. Although it also raises the question of just how is 
feather braids able to intercept Big Matt at exactly the right moment to intercept all of his attempts. I mean, even when the CMC made sure he wasn't any place around, he seemed to pop out of thin air at the exact second that he needed to be there to intercept all of these crazy attempts. It would be really interesting if at some point down the line the relationship between Big Mac and Sugar Bell gets even more serious and more and more serious and we see them date again and again and again and eventually all of that dating will lead to either Sugar Bell leaving her village to live on Sweet Apple Acres or perhaps even more interestingly, what if Big Mac were to leave Sweet Apple Acres to start his own farm in Sugar Bell's village? It would be a really interesting thing to see happen for many reasons. One, the village that Sugar Bell lives in currently doesn't have a farm, and it could benefit greatly from it. A farm would help the village produce food and help grow its population, and Big Mac could be a founder in that part of Equestria, just as much as Granny Smith and her family were founders of Ponyville, or just as much as Cousin Brayburn is a founder in Appaloosa. It seems to be what the Apple family is all about, expanding farms all over Equestria, and inevitably members of their family will have to grow up, leave home, and travel to far-off places to start farms. It seems to be the natural progression for Bidmat. To do so be a very interesting emotional story to see Applejack and Apple Bloom come to emotional terms with their big brother who they've known with and lived with all of their lives have to leave home and go someplace else. And it could also be an interesting story to tell the journey of an elder pony leaving home and starting a new home in a new location. And then eventually have the two of them get married and start their own family, have children, and have Applejack and Apple Bloom become aunts and all that sort of stuff. I just wish that we had had things set up a few months sooner so that it wouldn't hit us as such a major surprise that feels like it's from out of no place. But really that's about all I have to say for this particular situation right now. It was cringy and confusing and we're all just reading too much into it and seeing something that was never really there to begin with and maybe we should just accept the fact that Big Matt and Shirley were always meant to be just friends. <gasps> it's our second favorite song! They're playing my favorite song! Woo! Dance with me, Big Mac! It was no secret the, the way, way that, that you feel. feel. I love so pure, I love, I love so, real. so real. You show me your world and it felt, felt like a sign. But, but you were acted too slow, slow and you ran out, out of time. time. And now, now we'll be, be just, just friends. friends. We now will we'll be, be just friends. And now we'll be just friends. Be just friends. I, I didn't, didn't mean to hurt you. you. He didn't have a clue. So you went out and got busy. And found some pony new, new, new. Now we'll be just friends. Oh, and now we'll be just friends. Oh, we'll be. Just